When the maiden heard that the dragon was dead, she thanked her deliverer with tears in her eyes, but told him that her two younger sisters were in the power of dragons still fiercer and more horrible than this one. He vowed that his sword should never rest in its sheath till they were set free, and bade the girl come with him and show him the way. The maiden gladly consented to go with him, but first she gave him a golden rod and bade him strike the castle with it. He did so, and it instantly changed into a golden apple, which he put in his pocket. After that, they started on their search. They had not gone far before they reached the castle where the second girl was confined by the power of the dragon with twelve heads who had stolen her from her home. She was overjoyed at the sight of her sister and of Paul, and brought him a shirt belonging to the dragon, which made every one who wore it twice as strong as they were before. Scarcely had he put it on when the dragon came back and the fight began. Long and hard was the struggle, but Paul's sword and his shirt helped him, and the twelve heads lay dead upon the ground. Then Paul changed the castle into an apple, which he put into his pocket, and set out with the two girls in search of the third castle. It was not long before they found it, and within the walls was the third sister, who was younger and prettier than either of the other two. Her husband had eighteen heads, but when he quitted the lower regions for the surface of the earth, he left them all at home except one, which he changed for the head of a little dwarf with a pointed beard. The moment that Paul knew that this terrible dragon was no other than the dwarf whom he had tied to the tree, he longed more than ever to fly at his throat. But the thought of the eighteen heads warned him to be careful, and the third sister brought him a silk shirt which would make him ten times stronger than he was before. He had scarcely put it on when the whole castle began to shake violently, and the dragon flew up the steps into the hall. "'Well, my friend, so we meet once more. Have you forgotten me? "'I am Shepherd Paul, and I have come to wrestle with you "'and to free your wife from your clutches.' "'Ah, I am glad to see you again,' said the dragon. "'Those were my two brothers whom you killed, "'and now your blood shall pay for them.' "'And he went into his room to look for his shirt "'and to drink some magic wine.' But the shirt was on Paul's back, and as for the wine, the girl had given a cupful to Paul, and then had allowed the rest to run out of the cask. At this, the dragon grew rather frightened, but in a moment had recollected his eighteen heads and was bold again. "'Come on!' he cried, rearing himself up, and preparing to dart all his head at once at Paul. But Paul jumped underneath, and gave an upward cut, so that six of the heads went rolling down." They were the best heads, too, and very soon the other twelve lay beside them. Then Paul changed the castle into an apple and put it in his pocket. Afterwards, he and the three girls set off for the opening which led upwards to the earth. The basket was still there, dangling from the rope, but it was only big enough to hold the three girls. So Paul sent them up and told them to be sure and let down the basket for him. Unluckily, at the sight of the maiden's beauty, so far beyond anything they had ever seen, the friends forgot all about Paul, and carried the girls straight away into a far country, so that they were not much better off than before. Meanwhile, Paul, mad with rage at the ingratitude of the three sisters, vowed he would be revenged upon them, and set about finding some way of getting back to earth. But it was not very easy, and for months... And months and months he wandered about underground, and at the end seemed no nearer to fulfilling his purpose than he was at the beginning. At length, one day, he happened to pass the nest of a huge griffin who had left her young ones all alone. Just as Paul came along, a cloud containing fire instead of rain burst overhead, and all the little griffins would certainly have been killed had not Paul spread his cloak over the nest and saved them. When their father returned, the young ones told him what Paul had done, and he lost no time in flying after Paul and asking how he could reward him for his goodness. By carrying me up to the earth, 
answered Paul. And the griffin agreed, but first went to get some food to eat on the way, as it was a long journey. Now, get on my back, he said to Paul, and when I turn my head to the right, cut a slice off the bullock that hangs on that side and put it in my mouth. And when I turn my head to the left, draw a cupful of wine from the cask that hangs on that side and pour it down my throat. For three days and three nights, Paul and the griffin flew upwards, and on the fourth morning it touched the ground just outside the city where Paul's friends had gone to live. Then Paul thanked him and bade him farewell, and he returned home again. At first, Paul was too tired to do anything but sleep. But as soon as he was rested, he started off in search of the three faithless ones who almost died from fright at the sight of him, for they had thought he would never come back to reproach them for their wickedness. "'You know what to expect,' Paul said to them quietly. "'You shall never see me again. Off with you!' He next took the three apples out of his pocket and placed them all in the prettiest places he could find, after which he tapped them with his golden rod, and they became castles again. He gave two of the castles to the eldest sisters and kept the other for himself and the youngest, whom he married, and they are living there still. The End <laughs>